Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of my top 100 games of all time. Uh, today we are going to be counting down games number 90 to 81, so let's jump right into it. The first game showing up our, our list is a two-player game. Uh, it is a war game set in a fantasy world, and that is Battle Lore, second edition. Uh, Battle Lore is a two-player game where each player is going to be building their own fantasy army. Uh, you'll be then taking these armies, which come with these beautiful little miniatures, uh, and you'll be fighting on a, uh, a hexagonal board. Um, one thing that I love about this game is a lot of games, a lot of skirmish games or war games, or especially those really in-depth miniature combat games, uh, take a lot of time to build the armies. You have a lot of abilities you need to research and see synergies between. But the great thing about Battle Lore is army creation is very fast, very simple. Uh, both players create the armies in a matter of minutes, uh, and then you simultaneously reveal them and set up the board. A lot of fun, and that is Battle Lore. Uh, currently ranked 239 on Board Game Geek, my 90th favorite game to play. Our next game is a party game. Um, I'm typically not too big of a fan of party games. I do enjoy uh, laughing and, and having a great time with friends, but as far as board games go, I like thicker, meatier games, but Citadels, my number 89th favorite game to play, is absolutely a fun, fun game. Uh, party game might be a stretch because there are quite a few rules that you have to learn um, for someone who's maybe never played a game before, but it's actually quite simple. You're drafting different roles uh, to give you special abilities, and you are trying to build a city in front of yourself to give you the most points. Uh, and each role activates and does its, its awesome ability. It can be taught pretty simply, uh, just know the role that you're going to play, but the real depth of the game is trying to figure out where everyone else's role is, what they they're going to do, uh, what would this person have drafted, how can I maybe interrupt their plans because they're getting kind of close to having a complete city there. A lot of fun, uh, and that is Citadels, uh, my 89th favorite game, uh, currently ranked 401 on BoardGameGeek.com. Moving on to my 88th game uh, is a game that I've actually only played one time, uh, but I had a great time with it, and I, I really enjoyed the system of the game, and that is Puerto Rico. Uh, this is a uh, game of um, building a colony in Puerto Rico. Uh, I love the system of how you have to, uh, you know, get your raw resources, then you have to build your processing units in order to take those raw resources into finished goods and then you have to then trade the goods uh, to get them out um, so you got this three-step process you're working on which is really cool um, but my favorite aspect of the game is it is a action selection game where each player picks one action to do for that round uh, and they get a bonus when they do that action uh, and then everyone else follows doing a simplified version of that action so there's not a lot of downtime because on everyone turn everyone is taking an action so someone might be like I'm gonna be the builder on my turn and so they'll get a discount for building buildings but then everyone gets to build at regular price and then the next player might be like well I'm gonna trade this round and so they might be able to trade some extra goods but then everyone gets to trade uh, really neat uh, mechanic I, I, I think it needs to be utilized in more games because uh, it keeps the action flowing uh, and that is Puerto Rico. Uh, that's my 88th favorite game, currently ranked 27th on BoardGameGeek.com. Moving on to my 87th uh, favorite game of all time to play, uh, one of the first uh, strategic board games I ever played, probably the first economic board game I ever played, and that is Power Grid, uh, a Friedman Freeze game. Uh, Power Grid, currently ranked 39 on BoardGameGeek.com, is a beautiful game of uh, trying to power different cities with your power plants. You need to invest in maybe coal power plants. Do you want to be the, the, the wind energy king? Uh, do you want to do 
uh, nuclear power plants or, or trash, and you have all these resources that you need to buy in order to power your power plants uh, to, to power your cities. A uh, lot of auction going on to, to bid on the power plants you want to put in front of you. Uh, turn order and money matter so much in this game because you need to connect all your cities to make this beautiful grid. Um, very math heavy game, uh, very number crunchy, but a lot of fun. You got auctions, uh, you've got um, biddings, you, you've got upgrades, a lot of fun. Um, really interesting uh, economic engine as well, how when resources get bought, the prices go up very fast. And when people don't invest in certain resources, the price goes down really fast. So really neat economic engine, and that is Power Grid. Uh, my 87th favorite game. Number 86 comes in the list with a uh, simple card game that does have a central board. It's an area control game, a set collection game, and that is Ethnos. Ethnos is a, uh, a, a card game where you're trying to collect sets of different fantasy creatures or sets of different colored cards. And, and then once you get a hand, a set that you are happy with, you can lay that set down and you're able to put your little disc on this island and claim that area for yourself. Of course, everybody can keep putting down their disc in that island. And at the end of the round, whoever has the most discs in uh, different regions gets the points for that. So what I love about this game is you can play it with up to six players and your turns are, are literally just seconds long because um, you only have a, a couple options. You either take a card from the table or you play a set. And so if you don't have your set, you draw a card. Uh, and everyone just keeps going around like that. You're kind of trying to pay attention. Oh, no, they're they're drafting uh, uh, goblin cards, too. They're trying to go for that set as well. Uh, so you can kind of pay attention to what other people are doing. Um, you're racing to get your sets done, um, fighting over the, the juiciest regions, but then maybe someone will come in and gobble up all the cheap regions because no one's paying attention to them. A lot of fun, really fast, works with uh, just about any number of players. Not a lot of six-player games that can be played uh, in an hour and, and have you know just fast, fast turns. A lot of fun. That is Ethnos. My number 85th favorite game to play uh, is a two-versus-two two, uh, team game. Um, not a lot of games. I haven't tried many games like this. Uh, a lot of games claim they can do 2v2, two two, uh, but really don't pull it off but this game does it in spades and that is 878 Vikings the invasion of England uh, this game is basically risk with a couple extra rules uh, you're, you're trying to take over uh, if you're the Vikings you're trying to control uh, several cities in England um, before the end of the game and if you are uh, the English you are trying to hold off the Viking invaders and keep your cities defended uh, before the end of the game uh, the game is, is, is fast uh, uh, in a lot of res respects um, because you, you are interested in other players' turns, uh, especially your teammates' turn. Uh, it's got an interesting mechanic where you don't know who's going next. Uh, it's not clockwise. It doesn't bounce back and forth from the teams. You draw these uh, cubes out of a bag, and it, you draw it, and you're like, oh, it's the red player's turn. And then you're like, oh, I really hope my teammate goes next. And you draw their color out of the bag, and you're like, yes, we got it. Uh, so a lot of fun like that. Uh, like I said, it's a risk style game. You know, some dice combat, really simple to resolve the combat. Love chucking dice. Um, to resolve those combats. You're, you're playing cards in order to uh, grow more armies and reinforce your positions. Uh, really neat game. Works great 2v2. Not so much 1v1. It is definitely a team game. Uh, and that is 878 Vikings, currently ranked uh, 691 on BoardGameGeek.com. Moving on to my 84th favorite game, we have uh, a Fresco. Uh, fresco is a game by Queen Games where you are painting this beautiful fresco on top of a, of a, of a chapel um, and you need to uh, get your paints, you need to mix your colors. Uh, it is a worker placement game uh, where you are trying to uh, score the most points by painting the most difficult parts of this fresco. Uh, this game has a couple very cool mechanics all mixed together. It's, it's like several little mini-games in one. 
Uh, you need to wake your workers up, and depending on how early they wake up, it makes their mood go up or down, which impacts the game. But of course, getting them up early means you have first dibs at buying paints at the paint market. So you get to, then you have this paint market phase where you're purchasing paints at different stalls, and the prices change depending on what times you go there. Uh, and then, of course, you need to paint the fresco. You need to mix your colors. Um, uh, you also need money to buy paint, and you're not getting paid to paint this fresco, so you need to do side jobs of painting portraits for wealthy patrons. Uh, and then if you get your morale too low, you can send your workers to the theater to increase their mood. Uh, it's an action selection game where you don't, you can't do all these actions uh, all the time. So you need to select which ones you're going to do each round. Uh, and you don't know what other players are going to do. You simultaneously reveal the actions you're going to be doing. A lot of fun. Uh, you learn how to mix colors. Uh, and that is Fresco, currently ranked 330 on BoardGameGeek.com. Uh, that is my 84th favorite game to play. Uh, moving right along is another game I've only ever played one time, but again, I had a blast with it, and I really respect the, the engine this game has, and that is Raiders of the North Sea. Um, this game currently ranked 89th on BoardGameGeek.com. My 83rd is a worker placement game. Uh, Viking themed, where you are putting your workers down to raise uh, goods, uh, hire uh, shipmates for your ship, Vikings, getting your crew all ready. And once you have uh, met all the requirements of, of, of Vikings and of provisions, you have this long map where you can start raiding uh, the, the shore of this other other side of this ocean um, fortresses and villages and get yourself glory points and all sorts of fun stuff uh, the art in this game is absolutely beautiful it's a lot of fun um, the worker placement is, is definitely great uh, each of the Vikings you put on your ship have different bonuses and special abilities um, it's a cool mix of a, of a war game uh, and, and worker placement uh, and that is Raiders of the North Sea uh, the theme of this top 10 list here is definitely games I've maybe only played once. Uh, and our next game is also one I've played one time, and that is Francis Drake. Uh, Francis Drake is an older game. I believe it's out of print. Uh, it is ranked 467 on Board Game Geek, uh, my 82nd game. Francis Drake is a game where you are basically setting up for an expedition from Spain to the New World uh, to try to get the, the rich... Uh, the riches from the Aztec and Inca Empire set up colonies, um, and you need to fund your expedition. So it's a game where you move through this snake path of actions, trying to get um, provisions, maybe trying to get the queen or other wealthy people to sponsor you. Do you need to outfit your ship with guns? Are you expecting to run into hostilities from, from other players or, or from uh, strongholds over there? Uh, what do the colonies need over there? What do you need to bring? Uh, so you kind of need to plan your expedition. Uh, you want to take your time to get everything you need, but you also don't want to take too long because uh, whoever gets their boat ready first leaves first and you know can get those juicy spaces uh, over in the New World sooner. So uh, it's not really a race game, but you really need to be paying attention. Uh, or maybe you don't care. Maybe you have a different plan in mind and you can let those people rush over there first. You're going to come and clean up what they left over. A um, lot of cool strategies in this game. I had a blast the time I played it. I really want to play it again. Uh, I think it will probably go up in my list the more I play it. And that is Francis Drake. Our last game in this top 10, number 81, is currently ranked 2,668 on BoardGameGeek.com. But it's a great game, and that is History of the World, the Z-Man Edition. Uh, History of the World is it's such an interesting game. Uh, you really only get, I believe, six turns <laughs> In this whole game, uh, and basically you're going to play over six eras, uh, and each era or epoch, you're going to have one of the great civilizations of that time. So you basically start all the way back in prehistory times uh, with, with factions like the Sumerians, and you'll play all the way through to the Romans, and then keep going all the way to the colonial empires of the 1700s. Um, and each epoch, you are going to be drafting one of those factions, one of those empires, uh, and you'll also be fac 
uh, drafting a special ability card. And then basically you play, when it's your turn, you play your faction. Uh, the card tells you where your empire springs up in the world, gives you a certain number of pieces, and then it's basically a simple game of risk. You're trying to expand from, from the place you start at and move your, your armies out and conquer as much territory as you can by chucking dice. Uh, and then at the end of the round, you get a point for every territory you control. Uh, what's neat is you get a point for every territory your prior empires still control. So if nobody conquers uh, your 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 empire from two epochs ago, it's still generating points because that civilization is still around. Uh, this game was the uh, um, was the base that they based Small World off of, uh, which of course gives it more of a fantasy cartoon feel. Uh, but History of the World is a great game. A um, lot of fun watching people roll that dice and seeing what empires pop up when and where. Uh, and that is History of the World, my 81st favorite game. I uh, hope you enjoyed this top 10 list of my favorite games to play. Uh, we'll be back next time counting down 80 to 71. I uh, hope you'll join us then. Take care.